Hey, Mr. Z. Hey, Mr. B. What's oh, going on? Not much. Just ready to start talking about pyroclastics. Yeah, you and me. We're not in too many videos together. Yeah. Just well, got to spread the wealth, huh? Good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, pyroclastic material. That's what we're going to start with. So uh, we've already mentioned it a little bit in the uh, in the last video, and we saw some videos on it as well. And we're actually going to going to see another one. And just real quick, it was a review from Igneous Rocks. Actually, it was. Uh, Pyroclastics were just material ejected from a volcano, right? Yeah, so yeah, definitely. We'll watch it, and then we're going to talk about temperature, silica content, exactly. all that kind of stuff. All right, let's get to that video. The 8th of May, 1902, Mount Pelé on Martinique in the Caribbean spits out a terrifying Nuit Ardent, a burning 400-degree cloud of ash, gas, and rock traveling down the slope at 200 kilometers per hour. Within minutes, the town of Saint-Pierre is flattened. The once splendid theater. After the eruption. Rue Victor Hugo. Only two people are known to have survived in the town, one of whom was Auguste Cyprus, a prisoner in the jail. 28,000 others died, asphyxiated, crushed or swept away. On the 30th of August, another Nuit Ardent devastates the village of Mont Rouge, killing another 1,000 people. In November, a needle of solidified lava rises slowly above the crater. In 1929, a new dome forms, and since then, the mountain has been quiet. All right, that was a really good video, Mr. Baldwin. Yeah, and that was crazy. 28,000 people died from asphyxiation. Yeah, and then another 1,000 people not that long afterwards. Yeah. So, and all from the pyroclastic flow uh, uh, from the Mount Pele there. Okay, so let's talk about temperature, silica content, viscosity. So it was explosive, highly eruptive. Mm -hmm. So it must have been highly viscous, right? Yeah, and if it's got, if it's really viscous, so that means that it does resist a lot of flow, then it's probably going to have a lot of silica in it too, right? Yeah, really high silica concentration. And we said that the high silica concentration comes from low temperatures. Yeah. So as weird as it is, it's a cold volcano. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And we can look at that relationship again that the higher the silica the more viscous the lava is going to be. The lower the silica content, the more or the less viscous the lava is going to be, the more runny or watery it'll be. Absolutely. All right. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, so just kind of a review from the last one. We have the two types of lava flows. Mm -hmm. We have the ah uh -uh and the pohoyoho. Yep. Okay, so ah uh -uh was when you're, you're, if you're walking on it, it hurts, and you got to go ah. Uh -uh. Uh, yeah, uh, and that's the video where we saw, or we heard the, uh, like that glass kind of breaking, that crackling sound yeah. uh, as it was forming. And so that one was lower temperature, mm -hmm. and if it's lower temperature, that means it's less fluid, so it's more resistant to flow. Yeah, so even though this, this lava <coughs> in particular from Hawaii has not a lot of silica in it, mm -hmm. but as you lower the temperature, right, the lava itself is starting to turn into rock. Gotcha. So it's becoming less and less viscous. Mm-hmm. And then the pohoyo more pohoyo. and more viscous, I should say, right? Yeah, more, more viscous. More, yes, more viscous. more viscous means more resistant to flow. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Then we had those lava flows, those tubes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Basically, what we're looking at was more of it flowing. So if it's flowing, it's going to be less viscous because it's more fluid-like. Uh -huh. So then it's going to be warmer temperatures. Definitely. Okay. And we still have less silica content in this lava as well. Absolutely. Because it's not viscous. Okay. Okay, so now we got a new type of lava flow that we're talking about. It's called a pillow lava. Okay? Uh -huh. Now, I think pillow, I think big, fluffy, kind of roundish, right? Yeah. Okay. I think we're going to see something like that, and it's forming at the seafloor, it says. Yeah, yeah, and this is a really interesting video, and it's almost hard to describe, and I think we'll just let them watch it, and we can talk about it uh, afterwards. Cool. All right, let's play.
it looks like these guys are getting ready to scuba dive near where the lava is reaching the water. Yeah, it seemed like the boat was really close to where lava was actually touching the water from the uh -huh. surface and then the surface of the water itself. So it's got to be cool and super quick then, quenching yeah. right there. Yeah, definitely. And that breathing, you can hear him breathing underwater. He's got his scuba gear on, and that's the place where lava is starting to reach the surface of the water. Look at all the bubbles coming to the surface, a lot of the gases escaping from yeah. the lava. And there's that pillow of basalt that we're talking about, actually seeing the formation of the structure. The lava is pushing out and kind of getting these pillow-like shape, almost spheres. And There's got to be no time for crystal growth on this. It's instantly no. quenching. No crystal And what kind of texture would that be? Oh, so that one's going to be, if it's no time, it's got to be glassy. Glassy, yeah, so yeah. Quenched in air or water. Mm -hmm. And my guess is since the gas bubbles are coming out of it, it's going to be vesicular too. It's going to have just little pockets and yeah. bubbles in there. Yeah. Close yeah, I know. <laughs> what do you think? You're this guy is swim? Yeah. <laughs> this guy is fearless. how much that heats up the water too. That's oh sure. At least 800 degrees Celsius going into you know room temperature water. Yeah. Amazing yeah. video. Yeah, that is really something else. Just yet another lava flow. We've already talked about the pyroclastic flow. We've mm -hmm. talked about Ah uh Ah -uh and Pahoe Hoi. And now we're looking at this lava flow underwater, the pillow basalts. Yeah. Now, one of the things that would be really cool is, what do you think you could tell about a land if you saw a pillow lava on land? Not underwater, but hmm. on land. You know what, if I saw that on land, I would think that maybe at one point in time there was water there. Absolutely. And you know what, though? There is pillow lava in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. It's actually not that far from there. Yeah, because we said they're associated with divergent plate boundaries. Uh -huh. And actually in Wisconsin, it used to be a divergent yeah. plate boundary. And that's one of the reasons why, because we've got a lot of hydrothermal activity. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a really good spot to find some ore deposits back to our mineral resources unit. Yeah, that's right. All right, well, let's go on to the next part. And we're talking about different types of pyroclastic materials. Oh, so yeah. things ejected from the volcanoes. And okay? so everybody thinks of ash. Okay? When yeah. you think of volcano, you see ash coming out of it. Exactly. Okay? And so it's when there's a gas gaseous, risk, rich, viscous magma. Mm -hmm. Spit that one out. Okay? And it's forming really small glassy particles. And they're like little pieces of glass. If you breathe them in, it can cut up your yeah. lungs. That's why all those people died is they got their inside of their lungs all cut up. Yeah. Yeah, that's when they talked about the asphyxiation had to do a lot with the ash and the gas mm -hmm. being ejected from the volcano. Mm -hmm. The ash is probably one of the most, uh, um, well, deadly and also, like, problematic things that can come from a volcano because it can get into the atmosphere and travel long, long distances. And when that happens, you know, planes can't fly, cars don't run, etc. It just causes a lot of problems. I remember that volcano in Iceland that erupted, I think it was like four years ago, and all that volcanic ash had moved and drifted over to the northern part of Europe, and I think it shut down all the airports for like a couple of weeks. People got stuck in Europe. I mean, not that it's a bad place to get stuck in, yeah, but like they just couldn't leave. You couldn't have planes fly because it would clog up the yeah. engines because of the ash. And I actually had a geology student stuck in London for that. It was right around nice. Christmas that missed the first week back from break. I bet you didn't let him make up any of the work. 
<laughs> I'm nicer than that, Mr. Baldwin. <laughs> so we see a couple rocks that are made. We have scoria, which is our basaltic, so our darker, our more uh, ferro magnesium material. That has that kind of vesiculum uh, texture, classic mm -hmm. vesicular. And then just kind of like it, but a little bit different is the pumice. We call mm -hmm. it rhyolitic or andesitic. It's lighter in Yeah, color. it is. A little bit more silica present there. Uh -huh. And then lava bombs, things flying out of the volcano. And when they cool, they actually cool while they're falling. Yeah. So they actually get a really aerodynamic shape. They look like teardrops or footballs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's just made up of the same material, just different size. Mm -hmm. So ash being the smallest, and we've got bombs, and there's also blocks and all these other different terms that they use to differentiate the size. Okay, so now we'll talk about the actual volcano itself. Okay, we've talked some about this during yeah. the Owens. Mm -hmm. um, and it's basic parts of the volcano. So, I mean, real straightforward, we got a vent. A vent yeah. What's happening in a vent? So that's where all the pyroclastic material, lava, etc., is coming out of the volcano. And if we look at the diagram, it's way up there on the top. Absolutely, okay. And up to the vent, leading up to the vent, we got the pipe. Okay. Yeah, and that's going to be connecting the magma chamber to the vent. So it's just like if we take a look at... The diagram here, from here to there, it just kind of looks like a piper or a conduit. Okay. Right? So it's where the lava is at, or magma is actually traveling through to get to the vent. Okay. And when I think of craters, I think of the moon. you got big craters. Yeah, exactly. Kind of similar shaped feature, okay? Mm -hmm. The top of that volcano forms a big bowl, and it's yeah. a big crater shape. Yeah, and we can see that here, right up there up on top. Okay. And then we've got a parasitic cone. Parasitic cone, I think of parasite kind of leaching off the side of something. Yeah, okay. yeah. And uh, we can see that here on the left side of the diagram, and it almost looks like a mini volcano on top of the volcano. Yeah, it's like a, like a secondary volcano on top of the big volcano. Yeah, so during volcanic eruptions, we could have like a large eruption out of the top vent, but then there can also be other smaller um, um, eruptions taking place around the volcano because there's just so much energy being released. Absolutely. And last part, just vents that come out, only gases. You don't get any magma that comes out. You yeah. just spit out some gases. And when I think of the word fumarole, I think of fumes. Yeah, there right? you go. They That's spit out gases. That's a way to look fumes. at it. Yeah. All right. Okay, so this should be it. And what we're going to do now is if you can go back to class site, you get a quick quiz, some basic vocabulary, basic relationships we're seeing. Yeah, and we'll see you back here for uh, types of volcanoes. See you guys later. Take care.